Here's a video detailing the installation of this Renogy DC to DC unit and switching over from a standard PWM solar charge controller. So I hope that this video is helpful if you're going to attempt the same thing or if you're just deciding whether or not it will work for your system. Hi, what's up guys? I've got this uh, Renogy DC to DC. I got the 30 amp version. So this is what I'm replacing, the Wanderer. So right now I have a, uh, you know the kit, I have the kit, it worked totally work. I wanted to upgrade to a lithium battery later, which you should not hook apparently directly up to your alternator. The 12 volt connection coming off of my alternator already. There always has been since I got this van. Uh, there was already a house battery set up, but it's just a pretty uh, simplistic system and I wanted to be forward thinking. And also this doubles as an MPPT charge controller. So I'm upgrading the charge controller as well as getting a better, more regulated and consistent 12 volt power flow to charge this uh, battery off of the alternator. So it's really not that hard to switch over from the Wanderer. I wasted most of my time going to the store, getting 3 8 eyelet connectors to crimp onto the cables that were formerly just raw cable. All right, so you can see the positive and negative from the battery that will be going to the positive out and negative ground tie that will be tied to all the other grounds which on my van is tied to the chassis so the best part about this Renogy DC to DC unit is that connection is very simple PB photovolic for the positive as you can see positive for the solar panel coming in ignition coming in battery out it's going out to the positive of your house battery and then the negative is tying into your chassis ground so hopefully that helps lay out the schematic in a very simplistic form a lot less scary than looking at a bunch of wires on a board well first things first you just want to disconnect these guys when you're undoing the uh, power cables coming from your solar panel into your charge controller there's not live power so on the other end, going in and out of the charge controller are bare wires. So do that first. All right, so you definitely want something that will show you if a lead is hot. So I have this tester. It looks like a screwdriver, but it's just a pointy end, and it has a light bulb in it. And so what you do is you connect to something you can verify is, in fact, a ground. So in this case, obviously, I know this negative side of the battery is a ground. So I can go to a positive, tap it, and if a light comes on, you know that there's power. So... When you're finding your ignition cable, you want to make sure that the line coming through, you want to make sure, like, is it this, in fact, the line from the ignition cable? And you want to know if it's hot. So is it hot? You know, it's like, oh, this is coming from there. Is there power? I don't know. And so you need to unhook that line, that potential ignition charging cable coming to your battery, your secondary battery, and say, is this hot? So you can turn on the ignition, tap it. Yes, it's hot. Obviously, this is a battery. So that's always going to be hot. This guy, you know, is like, if I unhook this uh, positive lead, is this going to be hot even without it? Or is it going to be hot when the vehicle is on, for instance, without a battery? Then you might know, okay, that is in fact coming from the direction of the engine to charge potentially something via 12 volt. And also for safety reasons, you want to know what's hot, what's not, what's a negative or a ground. And you want to know, just generally have an idea of like, okay, all of these things are hot. So maybe I'll pull these fuses or, you know, make sure that there's no power coming in from the uh, solar panel, for instance, before you start taking things apart. Because you don't want to tap these uh, together or make it uh, short in some way with a wrench or with a screwdriver where you're accidentally tapping, uh, making a bridge. <laughs> Bridging the connection between a negative and a positive. So just going around, knowing what's what's hot can help you just have that general idea of like, okay, these are things I need to keep in mind. James is trying to grab my camera. Hello. I'm not an expert in this. I am not a professional. So this is just to show you how I'm going to install mine. All right, so another precaution I'm gonna take, I'm just going to pull these fuses. That way nothing sparks. And also if I accidentally tap something together that shouldn't be, make a connection that you know shorts out I won't blow my fuses in the process because sometimes just screwing things in and taking wires on and off and you end up accidentally blowing out your fuses can be super annoying <laughs> 
to replace all those. But replacing them with these big massive lugs, sweet, they're actually M8, so the same as the battery terminals. So buying a real crimper has improved my life dramatically. I, I just can't believe I've gone all these years. So I need to get this mounted here in this vicinity. All right, so as I understand, this out to here, because this connects to my battery. So if I reattach the battery and run this little line, I just, so, so I go the out from this guy to this guy and reconnect the battery, I should have power. Fused, blah blah blah. I'm not battery. I'm not gonna worry about the inverter or anything like that. Might spark. All right. So as you can now see, I've got negatives. One going to this guy, and then the other going to the chassis. And then I just threw this on. Nothing's secured yet, but positive to the out of the DC to DC. You can see the battery is there there's power now it's time to start hooking up the other connections i just want to make sure i had that wired correctly before i moved on i'm going to actually unhook these and then keep going all right so i have everything reconnected my inverter uh ground to the chassis ground to the negative output on the dc to dc controller positive input for the solar panel and the below that the alternator uh, positive so now let's flip you can see the lights are lighting up battery going got the solar going green check mark now let's see if the there it is dun 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 I was freaking out for a second because it didn't come on, but I didn't have the screw tightened. <laughs> All this is kind of just finger tight down, which is why that obviously wasn't. <laughs> All right, everything's working. So simple. You're basically just swapping, you know, what your cables are connected to. Obviously, you got to disconnect everything first to do it safely. But uh, to see that both. DC and solar coming through. That's super exciting. My battery says we've got the 13 volts going there. Very cool. Alright. Don't be concerned. This is not that complicated. You're swapping out one charge controller for another. And this one just happens to have an additional stud for the alternator. Alright, so now I've got those rewired or reconnected or both. Uh, I'm just going to attach the battery temperature sensor, which you can see the sensor right there. It has this little connection and it will go here where it says BTS. So it's actually... A the connection port is right right in that way <laughs> in that direction which will be all right so since my dc to dc is so close to my battery i just have it wrapped up there and i just laid it on top of the battery because it will be covered and stay put you can see there the connection across there all right, all right so the main thing to keep in mind is you're basically just swapping the positive of each of these terminals to their respective spot so battery positive is here it's the labels covered it's that lower one on the right and the pv plus is the solar panel input positive so and then all negatives now are going either are connecting via this terminal here so you have your, this, this cable I have going over the top, that's going to the negative of my solar panel output. And then the lower cable coming off that negative stud there is going to the negative on my battery, which is then tied into the chassis. All right, so it's really not that hard to switch over from 
No wonder I wasted most of my time going to the store, getting uh, 3 8 eyelet connectors to crimp onto the cables that were formerly just raw cable going to these screw terminals. And then I also wasted time, you know, just moving things around, which I, it's not necessarily a waste, but uh, I could have done it more efficiently for sure. So, and also I just had to play with the cabling to see where things fit best. And then moving a few things out of the way, like these cables here that go to other things um, off of the fuse panel there that I have to repopulate. And I moved this fuse down below from the side. It was on the side. And I moved it over so that it was easier to reach from this terminal. The positive out. This is the positive out here. This lower one. So, again positive in from solar panel positive in from alternator all negatives so it's just tying into the ground so whether you go to a bus bar or you have just chassis mount screws like I do so I have my negative for solar panel negative for battery this is my positive out that's just simple going to the battery really 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 easy to swap these over so basically you're eliminating the negatives and putting them to one stud on this unit all right and then it has similar controls you can set the type of battery all that stuff you can check out on will prouse's video he did an actual review of the dc to dc but this is just how i installed it in my van so i hope that helps got the temperature sensor set up there move a few things around and ready to hit the road so i hope that demystifies installing this Renogy dc to dc and mppt so i'm really excited because i just improved my solar charge controller and the battery charging capabilities while driving so both of those are a win i paid 250 for this off amazon this is the 30 amp version because i don't have a ton of solar so and I only have one battery, one house battery. So all right, so then here are the ear flaps, if you will, that go over the corner. So there's one on the right covering all the studs, one on the left doesn't have it yet. You just screw those in. There's two screws on each corner. Pretty simple. Covers it up, makes it look super clean. Here I got my fridge going again. Started it back up. I was off <laughs> all day. So I just wanted to verify that the connections to the fuse panel were in fact correct. Everything's hooked back up the way it should be. There you can see the uh, two little panels over the studs. And then also I turn on the van, you can see the alternator light is on. So everything's charging. So I have the red indicator on the solar showing that power's coming in. Yellow indicating battery voltage is normal. The green light showing that it is preset to sealed lead acid. So I do need to change that because this is actually a gel battery. All right, so I just wanted to change the type of battery so here you see i got to go to yellow which would indicate gel battery which is what i need and i thought i needed to poke this with some uh, you know a little small object but actually it's just a button on the side i, I can't even get to it too well here but there's actually a button right there setting it's just a little see there that would be for lithium and you just push it get to the color that indicates the type of battery you have i have a gel battery so i'm putting that to yellow super easy that was really cool you know, with the way this is mounted, you know, trying to get under there would be very uh, annoying. But this was actually super easy. So I'd say this would work for most, most people who have just a normal size van. You know, maybe you're just camping or you have a truck or whatever. And uh, just a simple setup. You're not living in it. You're not, you don't have 10 solar panels on the top of a school bus or whatever. You know, I mean, that's cool. This is just a slightly smaller unit. And I don't have a huge van. So it does work for me. Hopefully that works for you too.